Hi, Jordan. Hey, man. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. So, welcome everyone to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. Back with a live Q&A today with our good friend, Dr. Jordan Grant. So, very welcome, Jordan. Thanks for having me, Stephen. Happy to be here. All right, so uh, let's go. So, uh, what are the benefits of testosterone replacement therapy? Oh, my gosh. Um, that's a huge can of worms. Um, I would say in general, um, what I see from men and from myself would be improved. Number one would be cognition and mental, the, the, the decrease in mental fog. So an increased mental clarity. The biggest thing I see, you know, when guys come to me, their biggest complaint is not like a sex drive. It's not, you know, I want more muscles. It is, I can't think clearly. My brain feels foggy. I don't have the drive to get up and do the things that I really want to do. That's the number one thing I see reverse when guys get on a good protocol. Not everybody, but it, the majority, they really, that's their biggest thing. When I see them back, they're like, doc, I just feel like myself again. And that prompts them to move more, to play with their kids more, to do all these things, to work out. And so that would be the number one thing I would see for testosterone replacement therapy is this increased sense of well-being, clarity of thought, motivation to do things you want to do. This, the other obviously benefits are a little easier to gain muscle, much easier to retain muscle as we age. Prevention of sarcopenia and osteopenia would be the, the two biggest ones, I think, from just a long-term health maintenance standpoint. Um, libido, again, we, we go over that all the time. It's very hit or miss. There's so many other things that go with that. It, it does you know, improve in a lot of guys on testosterone, but that's not the reason to take it. Um, so that would be the, the big one, I would say, would be the mental side of things, honestly, plus the physical benefits, especially with retention of muscle and bone mass as we get older. Yeah, sure. And what are the risks and the side effects of TRT? Honestly, not many if you do it the right way and, you know, have a decent provider or, or at least even if you're doing your own protocol, if you just know a little bit about what you're doing, about the half lives of these things. Um, if you're not taking a bunch of extra stuff, like I think a lot of guys blend they combine all these things they take and call it TRT. Like let's say they go to one of these chop shop clinics and they get prescribed an aromatase inhibitor along with their TRT. Well, in their mind, that's part of TRT. So then when they start feeling bad and they get joint pain and ED and anxiety and they blame the TRT quote unquote, no, it's, it's not that. Or let's say they're on a horrible injection protocol every two or three weeks, you know? So from testosterone itself, some guys are sensitive. Um, you know, I see some increase in anxiety. Some guys just seem to really get an uptick. Is that from the testosterone or is it just sort of because testosterone amplifies a lot of just your baseline, who you are, if you're already a hyper anxious person, it could exacerbate that. I think if you don't learn to kind of retrain your mind on how you're thinking about things, you know, I see these guys, they want to check their labs every three or four weeks or something like you're never going to feel better doing that. So the testosterone, you know, is that really making it worse? Or are they already an overanxious person? I don't know. Blood pressure, if you get too high, obviously blood pressure and resting pulse rate can increase. Um, you know, you have to be honest with yourself. Uh, every patient I tell them, you're going to have a different range where that person feels well. As long as you're honest with yourself, if you get too high, you start feeling weird, go back down to where you were. So yes, you can have a few those side side effects. They're all effects. There's no such thing as side effects. Everything has just effects. Some we want, some we don't want. Um, the other thing a lot of guys worry about is acne, water retention, increased hematocrit hemoglobin levels. So water retention usually dissipates after you've been on it long enough. Once you reach a new homeostasis, your your body kind of takes care of that. Um, but that first month or two, people can freak out a little bit. Now, if they're obese or have a crappy diet, yeah, you're going to retain more of the sodium carbohydrate and it may spill over into your sub Q and you just don't like it. But then they want to take diuretics and all that. It's like you just need to lose the weight and eat better. Um, as far as like hemoglobin hematocrit, again, we've talked about that so many times that it may not be an issue. There is less there are less elevations on cream than on injections. I know people disagree with that, but that's true. I, I see it. I've got thousands of labs to show for it, you know. Um, so I think people blame testosterone for the elevated hem hematocrit hemoglobin. I think there's something more to it than that. This is my speculation because you don't see it on the cream. So I think it's probably something in the injectable, either the preservatives or the oil that's driving up that blood count. That's just speculation. So, but in general, m most effects from TRT are very positive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Third question, um, is TRT for life? That's a personal choice. I mean, 
why wouldn't it be? You know, it depends on what you're doing it for. If you're, if you only did it because you quote unquote had a deficiency of it and weren't making it properly, then yeah, you're replacing it forever. Because let's say you, let's say you're castrated. Okay. Let's say you had a trauma and lost your testicles. Of course you'd be on TRT for life if you want to feel well, but this is still all personal preference. So let's say a guy got on it just to feel better, even though his levels were normal and he did. Well, is that for life? Well, that's a personal choice. So people worry about coming off and because it does suppress your natural production, will they bounce back? Roll the dice. You know, there's no way to answer that. Just take responsibility for what you're going to do. And I say this to young guys who dabble in steroids. You, be a big boy. Be ready that you may need TRT forever after you dabble with that stuff because it may shut you down. Well, it's the same thing if you stay on TRT for years, try to come off for some reason. Like we do see mm -hmm. some guys every now and then talk about that. It's like, and then they want to know how much longer they're going to feel badly about after coming off. It's like maybe forever because you need it, you know? So it just, mm -hmm. it's individual. It depends. Sure. I know very general questions, but how many times per week will I have to inject? Man, that's again, there's guys that feel great on once a week and there's people that swear they need daily. So I, it's personal preference, trial and error. I have a buddy who has tried multiple times to go back to every other day injections and he crashes. He, he, he tries things so much to really figure out. He even tried cream. It would work for three or four hours and he would crash. I think he's just burning through things quicker. Everybody's metabolism is a little different. And so you have to trial and error it based on. Um, but in general, most people do well with like twice a week injections, honestly, two to three times a week. But there are outliers that have to go can go either way. Yeah, sure. What is the best TRT dose? <laughs> Can't answer that. It's the dose where you feel symptom resolution. And that's also a very subjective thing right like there is a range where and i called it like this goldilocks zone that you can probably feel kind of the same no matter what that number it's going to be different every day that you check it sometimes sure. but there's a range where you feel well and then you get below it to a point that whatever that threshold is then you start to get those symptoms again you get above it too much and you start getting the negative stuff we talked about so figure out what that range is and once you feel good stop worrying about it yeah what if I don't want to inject? Are there any other uh, good options? Best option that I've seen is the cream, obviously compounded cream. There are other options. I mean, you can do what you want to do. If you want to do Netesto nasal spray, if you want to do oral Jitenzo, if you want to do um, pellets, I mean, those would be the big ones. You want to do Androgel. You're more than welcome to try it. Um, they just don't get levels up like they should. Pellets can get the levels up, but they're not ever stable you'd have to implant pellets very often. And that becomes cost prohibitive for most people, but also the amount of scar tissue build up, rejection of pellets. It, it just doesn't make any sense. I always tell people like, okay, if you're going to leave for four months to go hike in Tibet, sure. Get 15 pellets shoved in your butt and go in. If you don't want to take your stuff with you, I get it. Other than that, um, cream outside of injections, cream. And I mean, I prefer cream because I'm on it, obviously, but there's nothing wrong with injections if, it, if you feel well. But cream is a great alternative. And more and more people are definitely coming on board with that. Mm -hmm. um, about injections, what is the best place uh, to inject testosterone? Again, everybody's different. I mean, you know, I know Gil will tell everybody, don't ever inject your quads. I injected my quads for eight years. I finally had one problem the last week or two of, of me doing injections because I went too far forward and clipped a probably clipped an artery instead of a vein. Uh, that was my own fault because I'd never injected there and I knew better. I just kind of was I don't know what I was doing. But you've got to find your sweet spots. Like if there's if, you know, upper outer quad like pocket area is very good for a lot of people. Ventral glute is probably one of my favorites. I never did delts, but people swear by the delts. And so I have tons of patients doing daily or every other day delt shots with the insulin. I think that's a great place to do it. Glute, if you can reach it, it's just really tricky to do it on your own. A lot of guys have their wives or somebody inject them in the glute because I'd get a cramp in my lat if I was trying to twist back there to inject into my glute, you know. Um, but I think the most popular that I've seen in best, best quote unquote, would be ventral glute and delts. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. What's the best needle to inject TRT? <laughs> oh, man. Again, whatever floats your boat. I, I know guys that inject with 22 gauge, which I think is crazy, but they, they're fine with it. I used a 25 gauge. I had no problems with that. I think a lot of guys, though, do the 27 and up, just a lot more gentle. Like if you're doing delt shots, I mean, 29 to 31 gauge can get the job done. It depends on thickness of the oil, right? Um, but play with it and find out. I like to 
tell people play with it to where you don't want to be just pushing so hard that the syringe is shaking. You want it big enough needle that it does still go in pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. So again, play with it and find out. I tell people to draw out with a bigger needle, 18 or 20 gauge, switch over to a anywhere from 25 to 30 gauge and mm -hmm. do it. Now, if you're getting insulin syringes, you can't change the needle out, obviously, but you can buy one milliliter lure lock syringes where you can actually change out the needle. Mm -hmm. Are sub two injections as good as I am? It depends. Again, like I got guys that do sub Q like daily and they swear by it. They feel great. They had done I am. And then the majority I see are the opposite where they try sub Q and they feel worse. So they go back and there's all kinds of speculation. And I see this crap all the time on the forum. Like, yeah, sub Q didn't work as well because you increased aromatization and all. It's like, you don't know. You don't know that. You can't measure that. Number one, it, it's just a different metabolism because you're injecting oil into the fat which has a totally different vascular supply and everything's different versus intramuscular which is rich if people ever looked you know at muscle and histology right under a microscope to know there's the amount of blood in there uh, capillaries everything it's you know it's insane and so that probably explains some of the differences why guys feel different but try it and see if it works for you just make sure you use an, an oil that's not super reactive uh, mm -hmm. i would not recommend cottonseed or sesame oil sub q Grape seed even sometimes can cause issues. So then a lot of guys want to switch to like MCT oil, which would probably be the least reactive that you could find commercially. Mm -hmm. um, after starting, um, when will I have my first blood check? Depends on the provider. Um, I like to do, and this is just my own protocol. You can go with whatever you want. I, for guys on cream, I check them at three weeks. For guys on injections, I'll wait about six weeks. So, you know, five to six weeks. You know, we always say about five half lives. Um, to reach state, steady state. Honestly, with cream, you could do it sooner than three weeks just to make sure they're not. I like to make sure my guys on cream aren't wasting their time. Like every now and then somebody doesn't absorb it well. Well, they don't need to stay on it for two months if they're not absorbing it. They're just wasting money. Um, yeah. so I like to check the guys on cream pretty soon. I like to check the guys on injections at six to eight weeks, five to eight weeks, whatever. After that, I'm not a big lab guy. I go off symptoms for the most part. If they want to check their labs every three months, more power to them. I will not. I will not. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to send me stuff all the time. And I'm like, great. How do you feel? I don't, you know, like, so, but everybody, every provider is different on that. Yeah, sure. Um, what's the best moment uh, in the week um, in, com uh, in relationship to the injections to have blood drawn uh, for the control? So for injections, most people want a trough level. Uh, and so you're basically, you would get your blood work done on the day of an injection before it's given. Um, that's just how we usually tell people, again, I don't care because I don't base things off those. I know if if they happen to get their blood work done like the day after a shot, I can extrapolate for that. You know, usually the only time I could see it being an issue is if you come in actually a few hours after a shot. Some of that actually gets in the serum like right away, I think. And so you get an artificial spike. And so that's you do want to avoid that just because it may stay thirty five hundred on your total when you know. Uh, they just injected, you know, half a cc. It's not 3,500. I mean, it is, but that's not sustained, you know. Mm -hmm. So trough level for injections is typically what most of us recommend. I do the opposite for cream. I recommend a peak level because I just want to make sure they're actually absorbing it uh, and not wasting their time. After that, we titrate based on how they feel. So. Great. What's the best time of day to inject uh, TRT? Doesn't matter if some people get anxiety and like a rush after they do it. I tell them don't do it right before bedtime because they might feel a little weird. But I never noticed any difference depending on. I mean, I could I injected all different times of the day. So personal preference. Yeah, uh, you already touched on it. But uh, what if my hematocrit is high? Uh, do I have to donate blood? No, there's no evidence that you do. You know, make sure other factors are controlled. Like make sure you're hydrated. Make sure you don't have uncontrolled sleep apnea. You know that you're not a smoker things like that. But, you know, the normal quote unquote range for hematocrit has gone down. It used to be up to 55% used to be normal. It still is in some places, but in the U S I see now like 51 or 52 is like the max at the top. And so people are, well, most guys on injections are above 51, 52 usually. So their providers freak out because doctors don't know any better than to just, you know, react to a lab range and not really think about what it means. Um, and so that's when they tell people they got to go donate. And what do they end up doing? They over donate and they end up crashing their ferritin levels and feeling like crap. So I don't push ever phlebotomy on anyone. I don't think it's necessary. It doesn't fix anything because it comes right back to where it was. And there's no evidence that it's a problem. That being said, 
if the elevations are not coming from testosterone and are coming from a preservative or an oil, it does make one wonder why is that happening in the body? Is that ever going to be officially studied? Not likely. There's not really probably any money in studying that topic. So we kind of got to go with, you talk to the patient, if they're anxious about the number, that's different. If they want to phlebotomize themselves because they're anxious about it, go for it. I don't really write prescriptions for phlebotomies for people. Um, I just don't. And I know what the guidelines say and I don't care because now if somebody shows me evidence, actual proof that elevated hematocrit from TRT alone is a problem then I will gladly change my mind on that. But until that time, I can't recommend an intervention like that just based on a gut feeling. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do I have to take anything else on TRT? Vitamin D, DHEA, pregnenolone, magnesium? And if so, uh, will you as a provider tell me how much uh, and what exactly? It Again, it depends. Um, I'm not as big a fan of DHA preg as some of the other guys, you know, but that's just personal preference. Um, I tell people that if they feel like they want to try it, try it, but start low because some of those things can really make you feel weird. I mean, we've seen plenty of guys talk about, I started pregnant alone and lost all penile sensitivity and erections and libido and other guys start taking it and they, they improve on that. So again, and a blood marker is not going to tell you, in my opinion, not going to tell you if you need quote unquote pregnant alone or DHEA. That's not how those work. They're not the same type of hormones as we're talking about testosterone uh, these these things are present in almost all cells and adrenals pump these out. And, and so you really have to just try it and see. In fact, if you take DHEA and again, this is something we need to cover just because you take something and you feel better when you take it doesn't mean you were deficient in that thing. OK, just like we say, just because you feel better when you do cocaine doesn't mean you had a cocaine deficiency. Medicines and drugs have effects that are desirable. It doesn't mean they're replacing something necessarily. So if your DHEA is normal in the serum, but you take it and you it relieves some symptoms, more power to you, you feel better. As long as it's not causing harm, I don't care. Um, but as far as have to, no. Um, Magnesium is great. You know, for some people, it helps them sleep. It helps regulate blood pressure. Like I think all that's important. Like mo most of us are deprived of electrolytes, you know, um, so I do think that stuff's important. I'd like to see a little more research done on proper electrolyte supplementation. Um, but no, it's it's going to be totally dependent. I'm not a big vitamin D pusher. Um, I, I see some people feel a lot worse on that. But if again, if you feel better on it, I've had guys tell me I started taking. I mean, Eric Toronto's pushed 40, 50,000 IUs on people and they and they seem to improve and get better. Like you just never know until you do it. Um, but just be honest with yourself that if you do it and you feel worse, stop doing it. You don't have to do it. Uh, I know this is always the question. What if my estrogen is high? Don't measure it. It's always going to be higher than normal range when you're on testosterone. I mean, 99% exactly. of the time, it, as it should, quote unquote, be. The normal ranges were not validated or for men, for people on hormone replacement therapy, number one. Number two, as we've gone over a million times, estradiol in a man is converted in the tissues, not in the bloodstream. So when you measure that serum level, you're not getting an indicator of the actual value of estradiol in the, each tissue because it's going to depend on the amount of aroma, aromatase in that tissue, which is not the same everywhere, right? Like it depends, it's how we're designed. And so the body was made to know what it's doing. This idea that we're taking testosterone, therefore now we have to poison ourselves with aromatase inhibitor. You, you got to validate that and nobody can. So no. Mm. One of the most common questions among uh, younger men, will TRT make me infertile? Great question. Roll the dice. There's so many guys, again, you know, bodybuilders that take all kinds of stuff and they don't get infertile. They have kids. There's guys that do one cycle and they're infertile. You got to know where your starting point is. A lot of guys don't get a baseline semen analysis before they start testosterone. If you start low to zero, well, guess what? TRT is not what caused it, probably. It can reduce it, right? In most guys, it, it will reduce the sperm count, but there's some that it doesn't. And so you've got to, that's why we have that discussion. And any guy that wants to maintain fertility, we get a semen analysis up front as a baseline. I recommend they freeze the sperm up front just as an insurance policy. We'll add in HCG after, I don't know, six to 10 weeks on TRT. Just let them get dialed in a little bit first, add HCG, and then get a periodic semen analysis every six to 12 months and just make sure it's not going down quick. If it does, we talk about it. We can add in FSH. 
a lot of doctors don't even know about that. Or I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I see how many of just rip their guys off testosterone to throw them on in clomiphene and, and HCG in, in insane doses. Uh, in fact, a guy in the group this morning was, was commenting about that and I just couldn't believe it, but I can believe it because it's common. So anyway, just as long as you stay on top of it, um, I think that's the main thing. Yeah, right. Will TRT increase the risk of prostate cancer? No. You're the urologist. No, no. In fact, they've studied that lots of good studies over the course of 10 to 15 years. Morgan Taller and others have studied that. We've talked about that many times, but no, there's no increased risk of prostate cancer. It's no different in a man on TRT versus not. In fact, sometimes it seems to be the opposite case, actually, that the guys with lower free T obviously have higher risk of advanced prostate care or high risk prostate cancer. Again, makes sense because they're probably less healthy individuals and people who are less healthy tend to get cancer more often, right? For whatever reason that is, but you can put a man with prostate cancer on testosterone and it doesn't make the cancer grow faster. It doesn't, doesn't speed up the process. Now, unless they were already castrated to begin with, then you can feed those cells with a certain amount of testosterone and they'll plump back up, but only to a certain threshold. And that's like 150, 200 nanograms per deciliter. After that, it doesn't keep them, make it worse. So, All right. Is TRT bad for the heart? No, it's the opposite. It's very beneficial for endothelial function, cardiovascular protection. You know, they finally did some meta-analyses on cardiovascular risk and even risk of DVTs. There's just no correlation with, with TRT and an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. In fact, t I think TRT is protective, especially when done, you know, in moderate dosing. Now, you could start taking, you know, 500 to 1,000 milligrams of testosterone a week for 20 years. All bets are off. So. <laughs> Three more, Jordan. Will TRT maybe go bold past it? Depends. So, again, depends on if you were meant to go bald in the first place or not. Um, I'm 44. I'm starting to get some recession here. But again, I'm 44. Would that have already happened anyway without me being on TRT? Maybe. How can I? I can't prove that unless I could clone myself, go back in time, and then go down two separate paths with everything else being equal. Otherwise, we don't know. Um, yeah. Some guys, when they do start testosterone, they will start shedding hair more quickly. Um, I noticed that more when I've taken other compounds like DHT derived compounds that I would get shedding. Uh, but with testosterone, I don't keep getting clumps of hair. This is just a slow, progressive thing. Again, mm -hmm. most guys are going to get recession, not necessarily go bald, but as we get older, that's going to at least get some recession. And we got to We got to accept it at some point. I mean, you can do all you can. I had a guy the other day. He had gotten a hair tra hair transplant, you know, like Fogel. And he said he regretted it, completely regretted doing it. He said if, if he had to do it over again, he would just shave his head. So, yeah, yeah. It's personal preference. Yeah. Will TRT solve my sex drive and erection problems? No, uh, that all depends on the problem causing the sex drive issues in the first place, which is usually can be testosterone. That can for some guys, it's all it took. They just take testosterone, boom, their sex drive is back. They're back in action. Most guys, that's not the case because libido is so multifactorial. Life stress, I would say, is one of the biggest uh, suppressors of libido. And that's just that's just the way it is. Most of us, as we get older, we have more stressors in our life. You're not going to be wanting to do it as much as you were when you were 16 to 20 something years old. Um, ED, again, it depends on the cause. You know, for some guys, yeah, if low T was the problem, or whatever, um, or something else maybe, but TRT can still improve erection strength, but not in everybody. If they've got, you know, if they're a vasculopath or, or they've got neurological damage or they're type 2 diabetic that's been uncontrolled for a long time, or they've had, obviously, if they've got some injury to their pudendal artery or something, well, no, that's not going to fix their erections. Um, it can help because of the improved nitric, nitric oxide production, endothelial health and all that can definitely help the erections, but don't bank on that because it depends on the the root cause of, of the ED in the first place. Mm. Last question of these uh, theories. Will TRT help me lose fat and build muscle? Build muscle, yes. Lose fat a little bit directly, I think, that we can tell, and very much indirectly because you feel like doing more. So guys get the motivation to move more. So you burn more calories. I think your NEAT, you know, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis goes up when you're on testosterone. Mm -hmm. Most guys also will take advantage of the testosterone and work out more because they will improve muscle um, you know, gain, but they'll also move more and burn more calories. And so, and then they get motivated because they're gaining muscle. They're like, okay, now I need to eat better. So it's an indirect effect, but I have noticed guys that did not change anything 
I see it more with cream than I do injections. I'll just be honest with you. In six months on a cream and a guy didn't really change anything, their body composition really does change. They do seem to lose, especially fat around the waistline, um, which to me, I know, is interesting and is a positive thing. Give this video a like and visit the shop test store for your supplements, insulin syringes, disinfection alcohol pads, and 10 milliliter glass vials. Also, check out my new ebook, Acne on TRT.